5月13日大阪南の繁華街にある千日デパートビルが焼けた7階のキャバレーの客とホステスらは真剣剤から出る有毒ガスと煙に逃げ惑った上津都市の生んだ雑居ビル Osaka's bustling Namba region. Today, we are going to explore the tragic tale of the Senichimai department store fire. The Senichimai department store, located in the heart of Osaka City was a building with seven floors, each with different shops and business, including a department store on the first and second floor, a supermarket on the third and fourth floors, while the sixth floor and also parts of the third floor were under construction for a future bowling alley that never came to be. Discreetly nestled away on the seventh floor, away from the prying eyes, was the Playtown Cabaret. Worked by young women, often but not always, from disadvantaged backgrounds, trying to earn money for their families, and businessmen seeking late night vices and thrills. It is important to remember that this tragic event took place in the 70s, which was a world quite different from what we know today. It was a time where safety regulations were loosely enforced, if at all, which is quite different from the world and especially the Japan we all know. On a warm spring Saturday night on the 13th of May, At around 10 pm, the Playtown Cabaret had crowded with around 181 patrons. Due to the time of day, all the other stores had closed, with only few remaining closing staff left over, and construction workers on the aforementioned under construction sixth floor. As the patrons of the cabaret drank and enjoyed what seemed to be a joyful spring night, they were blissfully unaware of what was about to unfold. At approximately 10 27 pm, smoldering was reported coming from the third floor where several electricians and construction workers had been working. There were attempts by some workers left over from their shifts. To put out the now rapidly spreading fire, but to no avail. It wasn't until 10 40 when the Osaka City Fire Department was informed, equaling to a 13 minute delay for the fire to rapidly get out of control. By 10 43, the fire department was set up and desperately trying to put out the now engulfing department store building. By this time, the floors from the second to fifth were billowing with black smoke, and the burning of construction materials used in the renovations poured carbon monoxide into the staircases, making exit from the upper floor patrons impossible, many of which the victims perished, frantically trying to escape this way. Others tried to go through the few functioning elevators, however, those too soon failed due to the fire cutting the building's power. That, coupled with 
failure of the cabaret's canvas escape shoots and the resulting fleeing of the three cabaret staff who escaped through a secret back staircase unknown to the patrons led to a mass panic among the 181 customers and cabaret girls. As the situation grew worse, crowds of onlookers in the streets of the bustling shopping district began to form. Witness accounts of people from the seventh floors breaking windows and desperately hanging from window ledges waiting for rescue were seen, with many of them falling to their deaths due to the heat of the burning building, others retreating from the window ledges as time for them was running short. Most disturbing of all, once the fire was largely under control and firefighters were able to enter the cabaret, they found many of the victims didn't even have time to react to the fire and were motionless and without any burns and still positioned as they were enjoying daily activities with one person on stage still even holding a microphone. In total, 118 people died with many of the victims unaccounted for. The main reason for the fire was initially attributed to a cigarette butt by a careless construction worker, but later it was dismissed with the cause largely being unknown. The building itself was torn down in 1982 and was replaced by a newer department store, Printemps, that would remain until the year 2000. And in 2001, the electronics giant Big Camera would replace it where it remains to this day. Japan is no stranger to tragedy, and this disaster is similar to another devastating department store fire that took place a year later, known as the Taiyo department store fire in the southern city of Kumamoto. As it goes, the cause for the fire can only be speculated. However, the utter lack of preventative measures can be more steadily scrutinized. Escape routes failed. The building was unequipped with fire sprinklers, and even some fire escape routes remained locked, making the building one gigantic death trap. Now, this is not a ghost video, and as much as I love the paranormal, I didn't want to focus on that as I feel takes away from the story of the victims of this horrible event. However, I will briefly mention that some people say that activity happens between the sixth and seventh floors where the majority of the victims lost their lives. Such things like riding the elevator and being taken to the wrong floor only to have it open hear screams, only for it to close again and take you to your proper destination. Perhaps it is because their souls didn't have time to have a proper sense of closure that they continue to wander this world not fully realizing their fate. To call these growing pains of a maturing society seems cold. However, it is worth noting that communities learn and adapt through tragedies and hardships. We develop strategies to prevent such calamities from repeating. And as such, the Japanese government aggressively moved to overhaul safety regulations across the country, leading to some of the strictest policies in the world and leading to massive urban planning reformations, including mandatory automatic sprinklers, necessary numbers of staircases and strict codes on interior finishing materials in the sprawling megacities that dot Japan, being aggressively enforced by the authorities and oversight committees with severe punishments and outright building condemnations for those who failed inspections. And with the unfortunate passing, it is important to recognize that with the loss of the Senichimai department store victims, we are reminded to be ever vigilant in preventing such horrific loss of life. To the survivors and the victims of this horrible tragedy, I wish your souls find peace.